Welcome to part 29 of Final Fantasy X-2. And if you remember in the last episode, we touched a little stand where it actually explained how these security towers work. Well, I just activated one just now, and each security tower goes as follows. Red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. <clears throat> When you activate one blue, you can activate another blue, and then activate another blue. And once you activate all three blues, you'll end up running into the Percep's Guard. If you activate all reds, you run into Geosgamio, or whatever it's called in this game. I'm going to call it by his Final Fantasy X name, because that's all I know about it. Anyway, that is a red tower right there. If you want to actually change the way it's moved, you're gonna have, or at least get another platform, that's what that does, you're gonna end up having to activate the red. But first, if you activate one blue tower, you're gonna have to activate the other two before all the platforms are active. By ma mixing and matching red and blue, because I'm going into another fight with the same monster again. Oh yeah, that just reminds me. The uh, red will get a stronger version of this, which looks like the which looks like Defender X from Final Fantasy X, where, where you fought in the Comrades. But <clears throat> anyway, if you mix and match red and blue, you'll end up rearranging the colors to where you could get to the bottom platform where you get the ribbon. Honestly, I don't need the ribbon because I've already gotten two, not to mention I'm trying to speed things up here, and I also have the mascot dress sphere, which pretty much defeats the purpose of having ribbon in the first place. Now, Percep's Guard. <clears throat> Word of warning. It's best to use physical attacks, and it's best to make it quick. Percep's Guard loves to use death. So with that said, Oh, and his claws, too. And thankfully, he doesn't use Berserk. So with that said, kill this guy as quickly as humanly possible before he uses any magic, because it'll take him a couple of turns to do so. Like I just did with Trigger Happy. Which is why I have the Gunner Dress for on. While you may end up fighting Yevon Construct... I mean, Yevon Machina and... Uh, you'll end up fighting uh, Flan, sorry if I keep saying um, I'm trying to remember. You're also going to end up running into enemies that you're going to need your uh, Black Mage, not Black Mage, but Gun Mage Dress Sphere for. Specifically, Kukulakan. I think I pronounced that right, yes. Kukulakan is an enemy that's going to appear in this stage, in this chapter. Now, the move you want to get from Kukulakan while wearing the um, Gun Mage Dress Sphere, it is the most powerful Gun Mage move in the game, and, the, and one of two holy moves in the game, because you actually have to get a Dress Sphere that learns holy, if you're going to use it. So, technically, the only two holy moves in the game is the swords, uh, it's, just, it's just Warrior Dress Sphere's, um, holy sword, and the Heaven's Cataract move for the Gun Mage. And Heaven's Cataract is the most powerful move because that move will pretty much cause an automatic, uh, Magic and physical break. So yes. Actually all the breaks if I'm not mistaken. So now we're here. So let's go to get this dress fear I mean, garment grade, sorry, which is the down trotter. And the down trotter, while it gives you extra HP, it gives you access to all sorts of demi magic. And Demi Magic is pretty good on weaker enemies, and it's good grinding material for enemies that aren't weak to gravity. But by God, it is definitely great if you have 
Dress spheres that'll give you an HP bonus. And what I'm doing is basically touching these uh, signs and pretty much lowering the platforms. This is sort of a puzzle. And it starts to drag. Up, oh, there's the monster that I was talking about. Quite frankly, you have to be careful with uh, Kukula Cat because it has a has the deadly stone gaze. And Vertigo, you gotta be careful with him because he will use confusion. Yeah, they're pulling out uh, petrifying monsters now. Well, as I said, Heaven's Cataract is his worst attack. And you're gonna actually have to let him hit you with it and survive. area, you have to push a button which is over here, and I'm not going to do that to keep from wasting time, because the item that you do get if you do manage to pull this uh, platforming puzzle off is Bloodlust, and Bloodlust is not really that great. Granted, it is good because it will reduce your HP, and it is good if you want to try to manipulate the catnip uh, trigger happy combo, but you have to take off the bloodlust in order for to do that. It'll reduce your HP, of course. Now then, um, yeah, that's the only thing it reduces, but it increases all stats and add poison. But anyway, now we've come to the platform puzzle, and then the platform puzzle. What you're doing, you're basically trying to. Not only open up chests, but also, uh, open up a pathway to get to the higher platform. And I might end up screwing this up, which, actually, I don't. No, no, I don't. Oh, another battle. Just screw those guys. Anyway. Now, I could go up that platform if I wanted to, however, I can jump down and... No, no, just no. Yeah, notice how I cut away from that. Yeah, it kind of screwed me up, by the way. Now, we could just climb up here, and this would directly leads us to the top floor. We don't want to do that, because I want to show you where probably one of the most awesome dress spheres of all time is. God damn it. We've got to open up that pathway, and by doing so, we need to climb down. Alright, next one. Oh, not again. There, it's dead. Sorry for the lazy editing, ladies and gents. I'm gonna have to climb down yet again. Uh, okay, I have to climb down to the back, I guess. Alright, here we are. And this should lead us up here. Okay, that works. Maybe I fucked this up. Uh, not again. Alright, alright, alright. If I can remember correctly, 
I'm having a brain fart here. This puzzle. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. What I was supposed to do was use this to go up. And I think I was supposed to jump off to the left. And I screwed that up again. Yes, I did. Come on, I was supposed to jump off the left, I do believe. Ah, <sighs> this is a new enemy! And of course, they will eject your party member out of the game if you're not careful. And of course, ending them quick, Steve seals that problem. But yeah, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I'm having a brain fart with this particular puzzle. Um, wait, 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 wait. I know I'm supposed to go this way. I'm supposed to leave one of those down. And thank you, jump cut. Anyway, I'm supposed to leave one of those platforms down so I could jump from the side. And I screwed that up tremendously. It just now dawned on me what I did. Okay. You're supposed to go up the middle and jump from the sides. And that is where you're supposed to uh, go. Yeah, see right there. And that will trigger half of the blocks. Now let's climb into the pod again. Bring you up. Sorry if I was wasting people's time, ladies and gentlemen. I just had a brain fart and I was trying to recalibrate my thoughts. Now this one will activate the final set of blocks needed to get to the chest, which house one of my favorite dress spheres in this game. The Dark Knight Dress Sphere. I kinda did pretty bad on it, but don't worry. We're done here for reals this time. And then the monsters attack. Nope! Nope. Anyway. We're going to climb up, and we're going to jump down this platform set right here. And we're gonna get the Dark Knight Dress Sphere. Of course, you should never leave home without it. And if, and if you happen to do so, come back in Chapter 5 or Chapter 3. Preferably Chapter 2 if it's the best time to get it. Because this thing is pretty freaking strong. Nonetheless, I'm gonna end it here, and in the next episode, we are going to finish Chapter 2. See you guys next time.